This is what the audience will be hearing at the San Francisco Opera House, the full sound of a 44 rank organ. But this is what the musician will be playing, a little Apple IIe computer, plus a hardware software package called the Cathedral 100. Computers can make beautiful music, as we'll find out today on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including Lotus Lookalike Spreadsheet, word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 baud modem. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. This is Gary Kildall. And Gary, this is the Casio SK-1. These computer keyboards have really come a long way in two years since we last did yes. a show on computers and music. This little thing costs about 100 bucks. It does all the usual things. It has a built-in synthesizer. And watch what else this little guy can do. It has a digital sampler so that... Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles. You can do anything you want with this keyboard. It's quite amazing. It seems to me one of the reasons computers and music have moved along so quickly has been because of the establishment of a standard, in this case, the MIDI standard. Mm -hmm. Well, Stuart, the whole personal computer industry is really based upon standards, starting with the floppy disk in the early 70s, RS-232, the IBM motherboard, processors, mm -hmm. operating systems, languages, all these things are basic standards that we've all adhered to. The MIDI standard is going to give us a whole bunch of new, interesting, and fun applications, I think. We're going to see some of those today. We'll take a look at the Commodore Amiga, the Atari S see what kind of music you can get out of those machines. We'll look at the new Apple IIGS and see how good it is with music and sound. We're going to start out by going to a computer expo which had a concert featuring a Macintosh. Gary Lewinberger is a musician, a composer, a writer, and a performer. With a synthesizer, he can mimic any traditional instrument and invent a few new ones as well. The equipment that makes it possible is a combination of software and hardware that communicates with his synthesizer through a musical instrument digital interface, or MIDI port. The process begins on a Macintosh screen with a program called Professional Composer to lay the foundation of the piece. The program counts out and automatically numbers the measures, creating a musical sketch on which to place notes. Gary can then move directly to his keyboard, the output of which feeds into the Mac, again through a MIDI port. Once the rough draft is in the machine's memory, it can be played back and manipulated. Gary uses a digital sequencer with eight MIDI ports to assign the different voices to eight separate synthesizers. If he adds a drum part, the MIDI clock will synchronize the beat to the tempo of the piece. I start the drum machine and I start When the fine tuning is completed, the MIDI data goes to a Yamaha digital sequencer, which controls the playback of the completed piece through the eight synthesizers. Gary can still change the piece at any point or play along in real time. Synthesizers began to appear in the 1960s and found a special niche in the musical world over the next decade. Now, with the advent of MIDI, electronic music can take center stage.
Joining us now in the studio is Chris French, a music software consultant with Activision. And sitting next to Chris is Bob Moore, president of Hybrid Arts of Los Angeles. Gary? Stuart, this is a really excellent example of a MIDI application. This is a music studio. It's a $70 package. Runs on your Atari 520 ST and lets you compose and play back music. So, Chris, can you show us the product? Sure, I'd be glad to. Uh, most of the operations are done just with the mouse alone. Uh, the and cursor. That feedback we're hearing is real-time feedback as you move a note on the staff? That's right. As you move the note up and down okay. the staff, you can hear the computer play that note. And it also tells you from the message board what the note is. I can select most music notation, uh, measure bars, ties. I've got 15 different instrument colors to work with to distinguish one sound from another. I've got triplets, accents, dotted notes. And here I can select all the notes from a whole note to a 30-second note, and that's with tempos from 57 quarter notes a minute to 200 quarter notes a minute, which is quite fast. Here we have rests. I can put an accidental on a note to change its key or stay in the current key. So you've got, you've got all the features that a, that a composer would be using. Just about all the notation okay, you need. Show us a piece of music that you would play just using the Atari sound chip okay. by itself. Once again, just drag the mouse up to File, hit Song Files, and I want to load a song. I want to load a song called Ends Vision. Which you, have, you wrote? Yes, I composed this. Okay. I made up my own sounds with the software and then composed with them. Okay. Each different color here is a different sound. So now take the mouse, the cursor down to scroll, and the music will scroll. Okay, now we're just using the Atari right now, nothing else. That's correct. The sound chip in the Atari is playing okay, all the music. We're going to stop right that now. for a second, and now you've got a million toys over here. Introduce <laughs> these other players and tell me what you're going to do next. Okay, these are MIDI instruments. We're using a MIDI cable out of the back of the Atari ST, which is the MIDI port is built in, and we're using a Casio CZ101, a tone generator from Yamaha called a TX7. We've got a Latin percussion drum machine and a regular trap set drum machine. These are all MIDI instruments, and the notes will tell the MIDI instruments what to play as the music is being scrolled by. Okay, so, so run this whole orchestra by for okay. us. Okay, <laughs> I'll dump this song with a trash can, go back to my file, song files, and I want to load a song. Uh, actually, this was a popular song called Axel F from the movie Beverly Hills Cop. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not the original recording, though. I wrote this music onto the screen, found sounds in my uh, synthesizers and drum machines that I thought matched the original song, and wrote it onto the screen, saved it to disk, and this is what you get. There you have it. Uh, if we look just about where the dot is, that is the music that is being read. And the MIDI data is spit out to the Sounds machines. And how long did it take you to put together that song? Uh, this song took about three and a half hours. Not too bad. But Bob, let's turn to you now. What, what is Hybrid Arts doing? What kinds of music products are you into? Uh, we manufacture a whole series of products for the 8-bit Atari computer and the 16-bit Atari computer. And you have something called a DAP? Right. ADAP is a system that we refer to as the Tapeless Recording Studio or Digital Audio uh, Workstation. Okay, you're going to show it to us? And yes. it's over there? Yes. Can we go over there? Sure. Okay, let's do it. Now, the music studio is uh, software really for the consumer market. And I understand, Bob, you have products for both consumers and professionals. Uh, can you show us a consumer product? Sure. I'll show you uh, Easy Track. Easy Track is a program that sells for $65 in the mm -hmm. mega chain stores. With Easy Track, I'm able to start and stop the drum machine within the synthesizer, change patches. That is, this machine uh, sends commands to this synthesizer, which is another computer, to change patches, make voice changes, and, and start and stop drum machines, that sort of thing. So I can stop wherever I want to and continue on. Now, so give me a quick summary of what EasyTrack is doing with the Casio keyboard. Sure. What EasyTrack is able to do is I'm able to turn tracks off and on. So you really got a recording studio here is what you're right. doing. Sorry. And when you get all these commands together, you play the music back again and maybe record that result in. Sure. Mm -hmm. I can start yeah. and stop the drum machine and play a part. Keep that. Hear that back. You can see the part that I just played there. If I want to, I can actually go up and correct the timing on that track. So I correct to, say, a 16th note from that track to that track. Replace it. Mm -hmm. Now the, okay. the timing has been corrected. Okay, on that Bob, time. now the, the high end, you've got ADAP. What does that do? ADAP allows me to take, well, replace tape. Oh, get out of this. ADAP is a 16 bit recording system. 
that for the most part in our eyes replaces tape machines and that's our eventual goal is actually replace tape machines the tapeless recording studio what ADAP is the version that I brought with me is a two-channel stereo um, high-end plus four type DBM input um, recording system 16-bit uh, right now this version that I'm showing you is CD compatible okay. so, so what would a professional system equivalent to this cost um, well if you went to as far as some competitors who are planning on within five years to release mm -hmm. such a system it'd be around three three hundred thousand dollars something like that and our system? system our system the low-end system is two thousand dollars the high-end system okay. is fifteen so thousand dollars <laughs> okay, what are you sure. doing with the CD player here CD player I, I can start from here and it's a sound source the stereo outs of this are patched to the stereo inputs of our recording mm -hmm. system. The recording system takes the analog information from here, digitizes it, saves it into RAM, and then I can play that back and manipulate that information. Okay, so no, it's being captured. The sound is right. being captured. No, it's right. Good. Playing from here, mm -hmm. I've um, captured that sound. I can grab a section if I want to. I can zoom in if I want to, take a close look at what I'm about to capture. I can scroll that around, mm -hmm. grab a section, Listen to that. So this is sort of like the equivalent of a word processing system, but for music instead. Right. I can grab a section, place it anywhere else in the song that I'd like to. So you can take any audio source, put it in here, massage it, play with it, do sure. anything with the music. And actually, this system is a lot more than just a recording system. I'm also able to take other functions, such as an oscilloscope, if I want to, or a mixing system. That is, we're planning on being able to offer 64-track overdub okay, capability. Bob, we're, we're out of time, I'm afraid. Okay, Gary, okay. we've seen what you can do with an Atari ST. In just a minute, we're going to see what you can do with an Amiga and the new Apple IIGS if you're interested in music. So stay with us. We've now replaced all the major machines here for another demonstration. We have a new human being, and that's Chris Potter of Memetics Corporation, a new synthesizer, the Yamaha DX100, and a new computer, the Commodore Amiga. Now, Chris has a hardware and software product here called Soundscape, and uh, can you show it to us? Sure. Soundscape offers a recording environment. It's actually a music operating environment that allows me to play up, up to 16 external synthesizers, as well as using internal sampled sounds. Um, I've got a little piece in here that I'll play uh, you can see it playing on the player piano, and what I'm hoping to do is take the sound of the organ and replace it with the sound of this wine glass here. Now this sounds coming internally from the media. These are all internal sounds. I'm not really using the DX100 at all. So go in. As I choose different options here, you can see the various menus pop up, and there are many, many options within the soundscape environment. I'll go into sample, and that's the current uh, sound of the uh, organ that was in there. And I'm going to go in and sample the wine glass mm -hmm. should have the wine glass so you here. just created a new voice is right and I gotta remember now. to turn off the looping here there we go and and you can see it says new sample up here and now I'll play back the piece and we have the wine glass on there the Amiga is particularly well suited for this because it has four digital analog uh, converters in it so it can play back sounds very well also in addition as I'm playing the sound I can have a background task and here I have some of the Amiga's graphics running in the background and these could actually be edited and played around with you know I could actually go in and play with the picture. How does that sample like that? compare with say uh, the sample you find in this uh, compact disc audio? Uh, how do you mean? Well, is it a better quality sa uh, sample? Oh, I would say it was less quality sound, but it's mm -hmm. perfectly adequate for the home studio. Uh, you're able to do, uh, you know, sample anything, sample your cat, things like that. <laughs> Chris, what's, what's the cost of Soundscape, the system? It's the Soundscape system is $149 for the system, and that includes all the modules you're seeing. The sampler itself is a small box here that plugs right into the port and it's another $99 mm -hmm. with software. So this could be used by the amateur musician at home or even a, a more professional musician? Yes, it's already being used by several professional musicians. It offers unlimited overtrack capability, limited only by memory, and since yeah, you can go up to 8 product. megabytes. And we're limited by time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, and Gary, we're going to go take a look now okay. at the new Apple II GS and see what kind of music we can get out of it. Thank Let's you. Go. Thank you, Chris. Sitting here patiently waiting for us has been Curtis Sasaki. Curtis is the product manager for the 2GS and Apple.
Stuart, we've seen a, a lot of attention given to the Amiga and the Atari because of their sound processing capabilities. And now we get a chance to see the offering from, recent offering from uh, Apple. It's called the Apple II GS. I guess the G stands for graphics and S for sound. Uh, can you tell us about it, Chris? Sure. What we've, did, what we've done is we brought over the Insonic sound chip from a Mirage keyboard and put it as part of the Apple II GS. So that allows us to do both digitizing and synthesizing of songs and music. What I'll play is a sample off of a compact disc player.